Clock fans, you're listening to another episode with your hosts Raul Lascano and George Martinez as they square off and tackle all of today's hot topics in sports news, trends, current issues happening locally and nationally, as well as highlighting some of our local student athletes across the Sunshine State. Now, welcome your hosts Raul Lascano and George Martinez. You're on the clock. What's going on on the clock, fans? How are you guys doing? January 7th, we are in 2021. So many different things have been going on. We got a great show for you. What's going on, George Martinez? How are you doing, sir? I am doing fantastic. Cannot wait. We have so many hot topics to get into. It's a lot. A lot of conspiracy theories, Heisman Trophy winners. We got a lot all going on. On the clock, fans, listen, we got the Heisman Trophy winner, Devontae Smith. We want to talk about how close the race was. Was it even close? We got Nick Saban's daughter. I mean, she was just firing shots on Twitter yesterday uh, about Ohio State and some theories she had. We have, speaking of Alabama, we also have Waddle Waddle coming back. Is his name, last name, right? Waddle's coming back after the ankle injury. He's back, the, back to the field, baby. Back on the field. That's huge. We also have the NFL playoffs that we got to do a prediction about. And then we got to do our NFL news catch up, our section where we're going to talk about coaches, the jobs, the hiring, the firing. We're going to talk about all of it on the clock. Don't go anywhere. And listen, if you're watching on YouTube, click the little button, subscribe and follow. Do your boy a favor. Right. And I'm joined by my guy, George Martinez. What's going on, George? How have you been the last couple of days, man? How's the family? Family's good, and it's been a long week. I've been waiting yeah. to get back to the podcast. We just celebrated getting over 8,000 downloads since we started the podcast. So shout out to you. Shout out Congratulations. to the fans. Yeah, man. You thank too, you to the, Yeah, thank you to the fans out there. Again, I know Raul mentioned earlier, YouTube, if you're watching it, hit subscribe here at the bottom. If you're on the podcast, hit follow as well. Yeah. That way you yeah. get updates when we drop new shows. comes out twice a week, Mondays. And Thursdays. With that being said, man, how how's the family with you? I, I know you got playoffs in youth league. We do this week, right? Yeah, yeah, how we do. That going? We'll talk about playoffs? <laughs> you kidding me? Playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. Yeah, we. Got I know that's what you were telling me this weekend. You're just yeah. hoping you can win a game. Uh, that's playoffs. all. We're, that's all did. it is. Congratulations. Yeah, if you fans, everybody here in Tampa, Florida knows uh, I coach with the Tampa Bay Jags. So shout out to the organization. Every single level has made round two of the playoffs. Wow. Um, How many yeah. levels are there? Because some people don't understand oh, what yeah. accomplishment that is. So Tampa, which Nine. You know, that's probably another whole podcast we could talk about if I agree with single age or don't <laughs> single age, single age. But right now you have you have what flag, you have six U, you have seven U, eight U, nine U, ten U, eleven U, twelve U, and then varsity. That's nine wow. levels. All nine levels made round two. I mean, I know you're not going to like to hear this, George, and some of the Tampa locals, but the Tampa Bay Jags is the best organization in youth football. Oh, it is. Listen, oh, there's God, no it's... question about that. I've always had a ton of respect for the Jags and what you guys have done there. And to have nine organizations in the playoffs is one. Yeah. But then for all nine to advance to round two right. is another. So, and there's, there's some guys uh, that the if you ask the bookies around here, <laughs> that maybe uh, out of that nine, only two are not going to make the Super Bowl. The other seven are. So wow. still shout out seven to have seven in the Super Bowl and win seven is still an amazing freaking. Wow. Yeah, man, it, it's not bad, but everything's good, man. I've been I've been waiting to get back to the podcast because let me tell you something, something that, that I, I love about me. You uh, we predict a lot of stuff, man. We do. <laughs> We predict a lot of stuff, and, and it, it, you know, people that do podcasts, not no offense to anybody else, but people who do podcasts, they just talk a lot of shit, all right? This is a talk a lot of shit. You're getting a lot of facts that's going on around here, okay? That's that's the big thing. We kind of predicted Heisman Trophy. We thought Trevor Lawrence was going to get it, but after the piss-poor performance that he had uh, against Ohio State, I, I want to say that the votes for Devontae Smith went skyrocketing. Well, it, so. and here's one thing I'll tell you here with that also is – the votes actually ended when the season ended. Oh, so, wow. so the, the voting didn't include Kyle Trask, horrific yeah. performance. It didn't include Trevor Lawrence performance. Yeah. Uh, it ended when the season ended there. So that was, that was interesting. Now, as we dive into the numbers here and, and we look at that, we can't, we can't go forward without looking into 2020. And I know, yeah. Why do we want to look into 2020? Why do we want to go back there? But again, 
when, when when you look at you know some of the things that occurred in 2020, if I told you, Raul, that a quarterback, a, a receiver was going to play a game at quarterback, the Browns were going to make the playoffs. Brady was going to be a Buccaneer. Yeah, we were going to have a team that had no name. Right, in the Washington football team, Derrick Henry. Which shout out to Derrick Henry. He yeah. is the first. One of my early fun facts for you in today's show. <laughs> Derrick Henry is the first individual, first running back to hit 2,000 yards at every level he has played. What do you mean? Like, oh, for, instance, for instance, like high school and college? Or is that what you're talking about? Yeah. So his four, years in, his four years in high school, he hit at least 2,000 yards in every year. He actually had one year that he hit 4,000 yards. Imagine that. 4,000 4, yards. <laughs> it's like he was playing Little League football. It's, no, like, and literally, it's like literally they they plan to get the kick return on the two-yard line right. and have him run 100 yards. God damn. Right. We had we had uh, Justin Herbert throw for 30-plus touchdowns, broke a rookie record. The Bills were going to be relevant. And yeah. I think the biggest shocker besides the Browns is that the Patriots – run in the playoffs was going to end. If you made any of these predictions and betted on them, you would have won big. I, people would have thought you were crazy, but Absolutely. You won big. there's no um, way. There's no way. But now as, going into our, our, our Heisman right. guys that we, that we were talking about, right? So he, here are the votes, right? Mm. So these are the final tally votes for the Heisman trophy. You see, yeah. Devonta Smith won by a large margin, doubling the votes yeah. for the second place guy in Trevor Lawrence. And then you had Matt Jones third, Trask was fourth, and then your guy, Najee Harris, got 16 votes there. What are your thoughts about where the votes ended up being? Does anything surprise you there as far as I I, I know we predicted Devonta Smith? Right, yeah. 2020, he's the first guy to win the Heisman since Desmond Howard did in 1991. Which is amazing. 19. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So shout out to him. You know, he's playing this game. And he's a he's a buck sixty kid. He's a he's a guy that's a buck sixty six one. Yeah. Think about that for a second. Think about it. And, and you know, us being high school coaches, right? You know, college is always looking for that six two, six three, six four guy that's two ten that runs a four four. This guy, Alabama guy, six one, buck eighty. Kane, Kane, Alabama, a buck sixty, soaking wet, and here he is, Heisman Trophy winner, headed to the draft. He's probably gonna be a top ten pick. He definitely is, man. I mean, what he accomplished this this year as a freshman was 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 beautiful. I mean, if anybody never got to watch him play, they they they're missing out on on him, and, you know. And I know he's got the big game coming up, and a lot more pressure is gonna be on him, as, you know, the Heisman guy. But just taking a look at that, did you? There's three freaking Alabama guys. Yeah, yeah, that was the other part. Three. Bama guys in the top five right. Right. of the Heisman Trophy race. Which, when we did the podcast with Ruth the Truth, I told you I don't know how you Najee did. Harris is not on there, which is crazy, right? But again, you know, like I told you, the show predicts a lot. And I know somebody from ESPN or Sirius <laughs> Satellite. I know somebody from I know somebody from the network is listening. I know you are because you talk about the same subjects we bring up. But anyway, what I was interesting about those numbers was uh, how close Trevor Lawrence and Mac Jones were. I don't know if you saw yeah. that. It was yeah. about fifty-seven off, fifty-seven votes off, or something like that. That was pretty. That was pretty close. And and again, I think there's a little bit of Devontae Harris, or I'm sorry, Devontae Smith helping him and pushing yeah. pushing the numbers a little bit. But he did have a great season. I, I still like Trask as a as one of the quarterbacks to go first round as well. So yeah, I was a little shocked that that Trask only had sixty-one votes. Well, it's not that 61, was, it's 61 votes, or what's what's on the well, bottom? Well, there? he had 61 first place votes. First place, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. So 61 first place. Well, he had, he had 700 um, total votes, but 16 only first place votes. Kind of, kind of crazy. Yeah, for me there. Now all these guys. I wonder if it's different if they trust when if the Heisman didn't end in the season and they actually got to see Trask light up Alabama. You know what I mean? Potentially, you, you think that would have been a little bit different in the voting? Maybe, maybe. I, I think that would have added some legitimacy to him a little yeah. bit. But then, you, then you, if you're watching play against Oklahoma, <laughs> it would have said, eh, <laughs> come back down to earth. <laughs> come back down to 700. 
So uh, th- that's definitely interesting to to kind of see how that all occurred. Um, right. the, you know, the one thing I want to talk to you about that I, I'm definitely want to get your take is there were some shots fired. Yeah. Okay. By Nick Saban's daughter. Yeah. Now the the tweet since then, I think may have been deleted. It's I don't know if it's still out there publicly or not here on this Thursday morning. But if you missed it, we have it. <laughs> we have the tweet here. So I, I'm gonna read to you what it says for for for, the, for our podcast listeners. And it's Kristen Saban. This is Nick Saban's daughter, and and she's talking about Ohio State. Uh, recently came out, and the school has this COVID pandemic happening at the school, not the football team the school that may end up pushing the national championship game off of Monday's date. And and here's what she said. I quote, if you're not confident to play, then say it. I call BS on the COVID cases. They're just worried about their quarterback and want to have more time to heal. If he's hurt, put in your backup. You didn't see us postpone the rest of the season to wait for Waddle. Bye. Yo, when I tell you greatest tweet ever, and you know what? I think she's on to something. I think we saw this happen with, with what, Florida State, right? Florida when State, they, they want to play Clemson, Clemson right? <laughs> they they COVID out. Well, we got COVID. <laughs> we, got, we got a lot of COVID. There's COVID everywhere. There's COVID coming off the walls over here. We the can't play the game. We can't play the game. Dabo, I know you're in Tallahassee. I apologize. We'll make it up to you, but I got COVID coming out my nose. I got COVID on the floor. I got COVID in the sheets. There's COVID freaking everywhere around here in Tallahassee. You don't want to play us. You know what I mean? Like they they, they use that excuse to get out the game. Every FSU fan, I mean, Cold Harley backed it up. I mean, of Cold course. Harley. They all know. Yeah, 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 yeah. COVID cases. Don't do it. We can't. No, no, no. Don't fuck the game. Fuck that game. We can't play. So she's not far off to sit there and say, you know, I think you guys are bullshit here. Because of the fact of it, what it's 10 days, 14 days, 10 or 14. You know what I mean? Is it 10 or 14 days when you get the, the, the COVID stuff? You got to 10, oh, 10, days. 10 days. So they're thinking in 10 days, his ribs are going to heal up. Because let me tell you something. I told you this when he took that shot that yeah. night, that dude is hurt. There's no, that's not a, let me take a shot. Kind of hurt. It's going to be sore a couple of days and it's going to be good. There's no way to, rec- that shot is, is, I mean, he took a nasty hit from that Clemson linebacker. I mean, crowd of the helmet, it was definitely targeting. I get that, which is, we'll talk about that later, but definitely targeting on his back. But he, I mean, full speed, he put it, he speared the shit out of that kid. And Justin Fields, I'm, I think it has broken ribs. I think he has Ooh, a broken ribs. Think I think he has he's, a broken rib or two. Oh my God, has to be. I think that kid was pissing blood that night. I think he, <laughs> I'm serious. I think he was in the bathroom like, coach, is this supposed to be red like this? What is this? I think he was shaking like Rocky Balboa after Rocky Four. You know what I mean? Like he's well, yeah, because I mean he he definitely looked a little rough. Oh yeah. Afterwards, he was a little slow to ginger around. He was very, and, and the next day it had to feel oh god completely oh like worse. he took it like like somebody shot a shotgun. Yeah, ran him over the car. Oh you know I mean, and that's, god, that's kind of what happened, right? One right. guy ran into the other full speed. You know, it's one of those things. Now, <laughs> I know we talked about this before. The Big Ten made the accommodations for Ohio State to be eligible to play in this games in the Big Ten Championship where with only playing whatever five games. Right. Now, you know, now all the eyes are on the college football committee about moving this game or not. Yep. They've come out and said we are holding firm and we are not moving the game. Our show's predicted the future. Does this game happen on Monday, January 11th? I think it does happen. I don't think – I think it was a couple of things. One is strategic, right? So we talked about it. If Ohio State, the school, says we have a lot of COVID cases, right, they can't really tell that player to go into a um, quarantine, right? They can't quarantine. So they can't really get that kid for 10 days in case they say we're going to play this game no matter what. And then you you know what I'm saying like you you identified four for four of your players and then they got to do contract tracing, then you're like oh god then it's ten players and yeah, now four that. becomes eight and then twelve and then right. you now you got the Brown situation where your head coach isn't even in the game 
Exactly. So now you, you do all that, and you're like, oh, shit, we can't have our players. So I think it was strategic that the school is having COVID cases. That was smart on their part to, to play it that way. I, I think we play this game no matter what. I mean, we even though we, we were so hell-bent on having a season, I think we're also hell-bent on finishing the season. I think we're, we're hell-bent on, okay, we're, we, we got to finish on time. We're not delaying this another three or four. January 11th is is the is the or January 12th what was it is that that Monday is the national championship right is this Monday Saturday whatever it is it's Monday, it's Monday January January 11th okay so you can't you can't even, you can't push it back two more weeks right no there's no you're, way you can't you can't push it back two more weeks because if you push it back two more weeks what well, that puts you what January 25th January yeah, 18th there's no way. something like that there's no way no way Super Bowl is is that following weekend yeah there's no way. There's no what they can't. We can't do this. Absolutely yeah. not. So they can't push it back. I think we have a game. I think we really do. I hope we do. I mean, later on today, who knows? On on Thursday, one of these morning shows, it's just announced breaking news. <laughs> they were going to postpone the national championship. <laughs> so, I think this is the escape Ohio State can get away from. Right. I think the game will be on Monday. This is going to be their attempt to get it moved. It's going to fail. They're going to end up playing the game. I think Field will be at, at a 70, 80% at best. Right. I think, I think you'll see him with the rib cage on because he doesn't wear one today. You'll see him with one on to kind of protect him going forward to kind of shield him a little bit. He's going to have to play through it. It's going to be pain. He's going to yeah. have to play through it. Now, the, the question I got for you, though, is there was breaking news that occurred on Wednesday. Yep. He's back. Yeah. Waddle has been cleared. To play. Yep. Now, you know, we think there's speculation that it could be just Alabama blowing smoke because, again, he's coming back from a broken ankle. Yeah. Right. That he, that he hurt earlier in the year. Does he, first, two part question here for you. I'm going to put you in the clock. Does he come back and play? And if he mm -hmm. does, how effective is he? I don't know Nick Saban personally. Okay. But Nick Saban definitely doesn't look like a, look like a guy that's going to bullshit you. <laughs> he doesn't look like a guy that's going to sit there and say, yeah, Waddle's clear. We're going to do this and then not play. I know he's clear for practice is what I think he was clear for, which yes. means everybody's sitting there getting happy. Like, okay, let's see what he looks like in practice. Maybe he can go for the game. If he can go for the game, I think that's pretty big. Like if he's, if he, if he's even at 85%, 90%, that's that an 85, 90% Waddle. Is like a hundred percent, a hundred percent of these other wide receivers on these college teams. You know what I mean? Um, that's huge, if, especially if he's on the other side of the Heisman Trophy winner. Right. That's huge. <laughs> this guy, that this is, guy easily could have been the Heisman Trophy winner himself. Absolutely, and he, a, and he played a full season. And then now we got Najee Harris that can swing up the backfield and go catch passes because everybody's oh, going deep. Boy. It makes it's going to cause extra problems. It's going to cause something. I, I'm excited because I liked Waddle before he got – Waddle I thought was going to win the Heisman. I, I thought he was – if when if he got to play the whole season, yeah, I thought he was going to win. I thought he was going to – oh, yeah, this kid definitely – he's going to come in here and wreck shop here. This was supposed to be his season. And then Devontae Smith exploded as a freshman. So I think it's going to be awesome, man. I think – I hope he comes back, man. I'm. Have you ever seen him run routes? Have you ever seen him – He – is one of the, yes I and I have yeah he is one of the crisp cleanest most elusive route runners we probably have ever seen it and and there's some guys in the NFL right now that were there are rookies that we said the same thing about you know Justin right. Jefferson with the Vikings you got Henry Hughes over with Oakland you got Stephon Diggs right these are yeah. guys that are smooth Keenan Allen smooth route runners yeah and this guy may be the cleanest most efficient most elusive guy of them all. Yeah. Does he? How much does he impact the game? Now, because there's a level of rust. Yeah. Right? He hasn't played in a long time. Hasn't taken. Matt a hit. Jones yeah. hasn't had to throw him the ball. Now, again, as a quarterback, that's another awesome weapon to have. How how effective do you think he actually will be in the game? Like, how long does it take him to get ready? Because he's going to be hyped. He's going to he's going to have jitters. I mean, he has to. He. He's a, he's human, yeah, right. So it's going to take him some kind of place to work off the rust. If you're Alabama, do you game plan for him earlier and get him the ball, 
early in the game to get him settled in and get his nerves out, yeah. see really how he's doing, let him take a hit or so. How effective do you think he's going to be? I, I'm going to put this out there, man. I, listen, Waddle's probably been practicing for two weeks now. Waddle's probably been moving around the facility very well. He's already been running around, oh, catching fuck. balls. You better bet you they've probably already smacked him with football pads and hit him a little bit. They've, 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 I think they've done that already. They've cleared him. <laughs> That's what you're saying. <laughs> Absolutely. They, he, they made the, he, he was clear two weeks ago, bro. He was clear two weeks ago and they knew, they know exactly what he's going to be doing. Them to announcing that he's clear for practice is the formalities you have to do for, you know, part of the NCAA and letting them know that who's available for the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, he's possible. I think that is the, I think Nick Saban releasing it the week of the national championship puts pressure on the defense of who he's playing. Like, shit, now we have to, now we have to go back into you field. Have to, you have to go game plan for him. And you got a game plan for this kid. Who do we, now who do I stick on him? Who do I put on him? Yeah. Because we were just game planning for one receiver. Now we got two threats and Najee Harris. And you're like, oh, crap. So I think he was smart because he, he definitely could have did it the day before of uh, the game, possibly. Yeah, I, I, you, I, want them, you want them to spend a week yeah, thinking about you at that DC staying up at night thinking, oh, man, what I, was, I, I got to defend the Heisman Trophy winner and the guy that finished third and the guy that finished fifth. <laughs> and they got to on it by himself. They got to stop the human jumping bean over here, who right. hurdles pe- Najee Harris, who hurdles people and defenders like he did in Notre Dame. I got to worry about that guy now. And this, like, it, it's gonna cause hell, man. I, I think it's you have to respect him, even if he runs hitches all night, right? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, and you know he's gonna go off. Oh yeah, you know he's gonna go over a hundred. Could you imagine if Waddle? Oh my God, could you imagine if this kid goes off? You imagine if fucking Devontae Smith grabs two touchdowns and so does Waddle. And this guy grabs two. Oh, yeah. And then, and then Harris is right. <laughs> Can you imagine what's going to happen? That's 28, 35 points already. Only those three guys. If those guys go off, listen to me, those 2 a.m. Ohio State text messages I was getting. Oh, they're going to disappear. No, no, no. I'm going to text you through the night. I'm going to text every last one of you guys that kept texting me. Oh, you thought we were going to lose. and Whatever, man. I didn't think you were going to lose. I just I think you deserve to be there. But I, I, it's going to be huge. It impacts the game immensely. Immensely. No, I, I agree with you here. And then, so as we, as we transition over now into something I want to talk to you about. Yeah. NFL. NFL, so there's been some interesting... Going. Interesting news that come out. We want to give everybody an update on the yeah. news that's out there. So right now, uh, we there's six teams that yeah. have head coaching openings. We got the Jacksonville Jaguars, the New York Jets, the Chargers, the Lions, the Houston Texans, and the Atlanta Falcons. Now, yeah. you know, for, for our podcast listeners here, we, on the screen we have our cap space and then what the team has as far as picks. Yeah. Where it was, you're kind of looking through this, and again, this is posted in our – uh, Facebook group on the clock sports talk, find it on Facebook, join the debate and tell us what you think, which one of these teams here is, and I want to ask you two questions here. One, the best job that you would take Two, the worst job that you don't want to touch with a 10 foot pole. Whew. All right. Start with that one first, which is, as you look at this here, where are you not going? Where I'm not going. I, I don't, for whatever reason, I don't want to go to the jets or the Lions. Wow, the Jets want- have seventy-three million dollars in cap and two first-round picks. Yeah, but for whatever reason, I believe in curses. <laughs> you think the Jets are cursed? I you think, think the, the Jets, Jets have replaced the Browns oh my as God. the worst team in the AFC now for for the foreseeable future? Because oh, the Browns absolutely. just got rid of a curse, right? Yeah. It was uh, two thousand three. I want to say it was the last time they were in the in the playoffs. So they broke a seventeen-year drought. The Bucks were. A few years ahead of them in 07 was the last time they got into the playoffs. They broke it. Now the drought falls on the New York football Jets. Right. Uh, and then, 10 was the last time they've been in there. I just don't want, I don't want to mess with what's going on with, I mean, it's too much. It, it, it The Detroit Lions, like, put it like this. The Detroit Lions this week, this past week, have interviewed, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight GMs. Wow, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. And I can go down the list, but I don't want to waste your time. But it's eight GMs. 
All right, former Falcons, Lions player, Lions uh, VP of player personnel, Lions director of player personnel, Lions director of player personnel. <laughs> like, what Basically, is it? it's a recycled of the fires. They also, Everybody that got fired is interviewing for the other jobs of absolutely. other people that got fired. The one that was interesting to me that, that interviewed for the job is the is for the GM is an ESPN analyst. Ooh, Lewis. Lewis. Yeah. Lewis Riddick. I'm a big fan of Lewis. Are you? Are you a fan of him? I, I am a big fan of him. I've listened to him talk and I've listened to his analysis and I like his breakdown. I think he's been pretty spot on on yeah. some of these guys. I mean, everybody's going to have a, a miss here or there, but he seems to have more hits than not. Uh, I know you're a Dolphin fan, so yeah. you have no problem seeing the New York Jets at the cellar of, of the division. Yeah. <laughs> I think Lewis Reddy going to the Jets is a problem for the, for, for, for you guys because 73 million cap space, two first round picks. I think you do some damage and turn around that team rather quickly. Yeah. Let me ask you this note. What, to, what, what team do you want to go to? I want to go to the Chargers. I want that rookie. I know I got me a good quarterback for the next 10 years. Yeah. I would love to. I, we don't even know if Matthew Stafford stays. Yeah. You know I mean, we, we, have, we have no idea. The, and this is the, the Los Angeles Chargers have not interviewed, by the way, anybody yet. Wow, that means they're waiting for someone. They're they're waiting for someone. Oh, they already know who the hell they're going to pick. You know what I mean? Urban Meyer. Could be, man. I mean, there's been so many rumors circulating with with the Chargers. It's that one rumor was uh, the Colts defensive coordinator Matt Urbanflus. I know I'm going to screw these names up. I'm sorry. The (laughs) the defensive coordinator. He 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 was interviewing. There's been interview. You know, uh, request of the 49ers defensive coordinator. There's been a lot of guys. That they have have been on this list. The one thing that's consistent between these teams, though, is the same five names keep be, getting popped up. The same names keep getting popped up all the time for head coaching jobs, which kind of concerns me a little bit. It, it, yeah. it does again. It's it, it's it's a trash circulation. All you're it, doing is the same trash yeah. and recycling it over and over again. I don't see any new names. I don't see yeah. any 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 guys coming from the college ranks. I don't see. I mean, I know I know By- Byron Leftwich. Is potentially maybe going to Marshall, right? Which I think yeah, would be good for that. him. Yeah. I think it would be good for for Marshall. I mean, I, yeah, we, we we talked about that on the show that he was going to be one year and out of there because he's, he's got to go. Yeah, he's got to go. Called Tom Brady mouth. I hate that stupid fucking play <laughs> on national television. I was like, yeah, that guy's gone. <laughs> yeah, guy, that guy's not going to be there. That guy's out of here. For me, the job that I don't want at all is the Houston Texans. Now again, I love really? Deshaun Watson. Do you think it's because of love, the locker room? I love no, 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 not at all. I love Deshaun Watson, right? But you look at their their, their cap situation there, fifteen million dollars in the red. I mean, he's got to cut people. Yeah, right. Which people if you're going to cut people, you're going to have some con- some contracts that are going to expire, right? So that's going to help alleviate. But then you got to get you you have to set aside about eleven to fifteen million dollars in rookie money because those guys are going to are guaranteed deals, right? You're going to sign those regardless. Right. Um, and they don't have any draft picks in the first or in the second round. Yeah. Bill O'Brien, if there was ever an award for how to mess up a team, oh. Bill O'Brien, it should be named after him. It should be the Bill O'Brien mess up a team award. Listen, when when him team and Adam Case team? together. Oh god. Which, have, which and they're they're interviewing for the offensive coordinator in Alabama. This, this fucking job. You gotta be kidding me. I, I don't it's, get it. My thing with Bill O'Brien, with Bill O'Brien, uh, you're right. They should name it after. They, they should say teams are tanking, teams are billing right now. They're doing a bill, <laughs> they're brining it. Like they, they got to name it something else because you're right. This guy screwed it up, and I've never been a fan of the head coach being the GM as well. I, I've never been a fan of that. Um, I know how difficult it can be with a GM and a head coach, different personalities colliding, different personalities hitting. You saw that with the with the I'm gonna name a team that's not even in football. You saw that with the freaking Chicago Bulls, 96 Bulls, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The GM and the head coach just couldn't get along. So you see it all the time. Um and that typically that. happens. That typically happens whenever the head coach is already there. Yes. And they bring in a new GM. That's why that's why that always usually the firings happen in pairs. Right. GM and head coach go together because a GM wants to bring their own people in the Chicago Bulls situation. The head coach was already there, was established right in Phil Jackson and the GM 
was a new up and coming kind of guy that the team decided to hire because the other guy decided to retire. So it, yeah. it was one of the situations and, and you're seeing it, you're seeing it, you know, across the board right now. Now the job that I would want, I agree with you is the chargers. Oh yeah. I love, I, I'm upside. just a huge fan of the chargers. I cannot wait for darn James to come back from the, 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 the young man from Florida state it was the first round pick for them two years ago. He hurt, he tore his Achilles early in the year. Right. He's going to be coming back on defense. They have really young pieces. They're in decent cap situation, right? Um, Eckler, Keenan Allen are all still there. I'm excited to see how those guys kind of continue to build. Hopefully they get a – Urban Meyer, to me, and again, our show's done the prediction. If Urban Meyer comes back, it is either the Jacksonville Jaguars or the Chargers. Oh, I, I agree. It's the two, it's the two most – what do you call it? Lucrative, attractive, ideal, jobs. ideal situations right now. Jacksonville Jaguars are the number one pick. That you know they're gonna probably go Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence announced yesterday that he will be dr- entering the draft because the Jets so, aren't don't have the number one pick anymore. So now he's going. <laughs> now I don't have to go back to school, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, I think those are the two best jobs that can in football. I just don't like the situation with the Jets and the freaking the Lions. I just don't like it. Yeah. I, don't, I don't. I don't think if you, even if you bring in a good head coach, which by the way, the offensive coordinator Eric ben, Benini, I, I, I just I like him, man. I like I him too. Like him a lot, the offensive guy. I like him a lot. I, I think he changed around, but I don't even think his name could keep Matthew Stafford there for another year. I don't think Matthew no. Stafford would be there. You know what I mean? But I, I, but again, ten million dollars in cap room is not a whole lot of money. That's which not. You're not going to get a lot of players around him. You're not. You're not going to. You're not going to get a lot. It's a, it's a long rebuild situation. Again, Chargers look good. Jacksonville Jaguars look good. Now, in in, in other news, you know, I have a couple of fun facts for you. Yeah, let's let's go. So I have two of them here for you, and I got them here on the screen. Uh-huh. Did you know Aaron Rodgers has thrown forty eight touchdown passes? You may have known that already. Mm-hmm. But did you know his team has only punted the ball 46 times? Less <laughs> than touchdowns he's thrown? No, that I didn't is know that. Ridiculous. Absolutely. Ridiculous. Absolutely. Well, I mean, Aaron Rodgers should be job. the MVP. Oh, after saying that stat, why not? Yeah. And then Let's the other one here is Andy Reid has the opportunity to host his third straight AFC championship game. If they win their game after the bye, right. there's only been one other team to do that, and it was on the NFC in the 2002 2004. Who was the head coach? Andy Reid. At what point do we elevate Andy Reid into the Bill Belichick conversation? I think he's always, he has never been there. So Bill has six rings. Yeah. Right. Andy doesn't have six. No. He has the one yep. that he just got with Mahomes. But if you look, think about consistency and con- and, and uh, evolving, he's he's changed football. Oh, immensely. He did it at Philadelphia with Don McNabb there and the type of offense they ran. He went to Kansas City and rebuilt that team because they were terrible for a couple years before they, when Alex Smith was there and, and LaShawn McCoy and those came and they got better and they drafted well. At what yeah. point does he become one of the goats as far as coaches in the NFL? Or for you, is he already there? Yeah, he's already there. He's he's in the top five. He's in the top five already. I don't think he is the goat, but he's definitely in the top five. Andy Reid is very creative on offense, knows how to get to these players. Despite his age difference amongst the younger guys that he has, he can still connect to them, still adapt, and find ways to get these guys uh, involved in football games. And, and again, his offense is just – there's nothing that they can't do. There's nothing that they can't switch into and try to kill defenses with. You know what I mean? I, really, I, I agree with you. Uh, to me, he's up there as well. I mean, right. I think he's changed the game. He's definitely in, in that GOAT conversation. He's one of the best coaches to have ever coach a game. And then the other breaking news I got for you, and you're going to love this, this news you're going to love because you've been calling for this for weeks. Yes. For weeks. Yes. Your guy, <laughs> Chan Gailey, is gone from the Dolphins. He has resigned. He is going back to retirement. He was he came out of retirement 
to coach Tua, and now he's going back out of retirement because he couldn't coach Tua. I just <laughs> listen, man. I, no, no offense to Chan Gailey. He's put in a lot of time, a lot of work. I understand that. But we said it f- the whole season. It looks like two different playbooks are going on when the two different quarterbacks are in. Um, and I just don't think Chan Gailey has a vision to bring up Tua. Does that make any sense? Like, I don't think he has a vision of what he's going to see progression-wise uh, of Tua. Well, and I think what makes Andy Reid great is what hurts Chan Gailey because he has not adapted to today's football. There you go. There you go. And we just talked about Andy Reid and what makes him great is the fact he's adapted. He's changed football, right? They can do whatever they want. Any given time, they can go to any type of playbook. We, yeah. we need to run the ball this week. We're going to run the ball this week. We need to air it out and go five wide. We can do that, right? We need to go RPO and do a little read option. We can do that also. Yeah. Chain Gilly doesn't have, well, I, I don't want to say he doesn't have that ability because I don't know that. Has not displayed right. that ability with Tua and some of the things they have there. The record they have, and as far as the Dolphins got this year at 10 and 6, was mostly because of their defense and Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick yeah. was the closer. That was always nice to have that in your back pocket. Yeah, he, he was a closer. He brought you in yeah. and closed the games out. Um, he was there to, to give to a, a breather when, when the young man was struggling. And again, yeah. again the, the, the firing might be the fact that, like I was trying to tell you, anytime we got tough for Tua, what we decided to do was tell this kid to sit on a bench and wear a mask and let Papa Fitz go in here and freaking <laughs> make something happen. We didn't develop this kid to understand he's got to go uh, through the training. Try to coddle and protect him. And I, and I get that, but you, if you're going to do that, you can't, then he's not ready to start the games. Right. Because you can't, right. it's not fair to Fitzpatrick, who, I mean, until they got to tell me why, but he did not do anything to lose the job this time. You know what I mean? In his career, there's been times where he, you know what I'm saying, he plays four or five good games and then they would bench him and then it's done. And you know what I mean? And that same cycle happened. I didn't see that happening from Fitz this year. This year he looked really, really good and we decided to bench him. It broke his heart. It broke my heart to watch him on an interview say that. And then Tua comes along. I don't know what the game plan was for Tua. I don't know what changed. I don't think there was one. I don't, I don't think there was I one. I think, I think they either. put him in to put him in because they felt the pressure from society, maybe. Yeah. That you had to put him, maybe ownership. Had a role into that? I don't know because you know this year was not a Super Bowl year for the Dolphins. So you had Fitzpatrick, you write him out, you let Tua learn, let him develop in the NFL. Year two was going to be Tua's year. You got a free agency and you get some pieces to put around Tua going yeah. forward. And, and then you and Fitz hands a baton over to Tua and Tua goes and run with it. Or if you're going to put the kid in, let him go through the ups and the downs. You're gonna have the to downs is where you learn the most in football and in, in life in period. At your lowest point is where you learn the most in life. For Tua, that was going to be in his career in that rookie season, his lowest he had to go through those situations and go through the two, three picks a game and right. go through the, the media and, and how they're gonna lash him. Oh, you were picked, you know, fifth overall. Are you really worth it? Were you worth it? This, you know, you, you know how the media will yeah. d- you know create this problem they may not really crush be you and crush you yeah crush you right he needs to go through that that's part of developing especially as a quarterback the, the listen man i i no offense to two no offense to the university of alabama but i would i was literally calling for herbert the entire i don't i know the dog ah. i'm just some guy but i think herbert should have went one no, first overall not two I think they crumbled under the pressure of the media, like you're saying. Two of the number one draft pick. He's this, he's that, he's this. Hey, man, I get that, but th- there's a kid, a monster that everybody calls Sunshine now. They need to, Sunshine needed to come to the Sunshine State. <laughs> he needed to be in Miami. That's the guy I was like, look, I, I like his physique. He's 6'6. He can see over the freaking yeah. line of scrimmage. It's, it's, it's not so big for a quarterback. It's huge. So I would love to see. And then that kid has an arm, man. He does. He has a cannon, bro. You know, which why? which I, which I, which I don't think Tua really has that kind of an arm. I haven't seen it. Have you? I don't think he is. I don't think he's, he's, that kind he's of arm. really good at checkdowns. Well, and I think that's what I, I think he's going to be a intermediate checkdown game manager. 
kind of guy runs the ball every now and then. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I don't still, I'm still out there on, on the Tua situation. Now, who would you like to see? Do you have any choices as far as OC? Because, again, you know, you're you're definitely on the Brian Flores coach of the year train. On, on the train, yeah. So he made the right decision in getting yeah. rid of Chan Gailey. Yes. He has to make the best decision of his career in whoever he decides to bring as an OC. Yes. This OC job of who he hires will either continue his career as a head coach or it'll be two years from now we'll have the same conversation of who's going to be a head coach for the Dolphins and the cycle will continue for your Dolphins. So who would you like to see get brought in? The obvious guy would be the Chiefs OC. Like That'd be the obvious guy, but he's – I don't know if his passion is to be a head coach. I don't know what it is. I would love him. But when whoever Brian Flores brings in, I'm going to support because up to this point, Brian Flores has been on point with decision-making. He's not putting up points. Get rid of the OC. We're going to go find another guy. What if he, he brings in Bill O'Brien? If he brings in – oh, my God. <laughs> I literally threw up in my mouth for that. It's like, if this sum of a bitch brings in Bill O'Brien after what he did, lose it. You will lose it. You will lose it. it. He's going to piss off 40 million freaking Cubans in Miami. They're not going to be having this because even the Cubans don't like Bill O'Brien. You know what I'm saying? Holy shit. If he brings it, yeah, that that was a great nut punch there, George. Thanks. I really appreciate it. If he brought in Bill O'Brien, Jesus. You know, you've been you've been sticking out your chest all year long. Oh, my dolphins are doing better than your bugs. My dolphins yes. are doing better than your bugs. Yes. And 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 I haven't brought up oh we in the playoffs, but yes. <laughs> I figured save that for, for another episode. But I figured yeah. you know little Brian Jab was it was would be my be. luck. It'd be my luck they fucking go get your guy. Uh what's it called? The OC over Byron? The oh, Byron? It'd be my luck they hire Byron Left, which is some bullshit. I, I don't care who he goes picks. I really don't care. I, I I trust who he's gonna pick. Yeah, just not Bill O'Brien or Adam Adam Gase. Just God, not one of those you guys. Bring back freaking Adam Gase. I, oh my god, the coked out right. coach. I'm, I'm I'm done. I I want to keep us on schedule. Sure. And we're gonna talk about where my bucks are and where your dolphins aren't. Playoffs. Thank you. I appreciate that. And we were ten and six, but whatever. You know, you yeah, eleven and five would have got ten. You know, you know how horrible it is to see or, the, or in the NFC or East. Or you know. <laughs> You know how hard it is to be looking at the at like we're literally in the house looking through the blinds outside. Oh, there's a meme. There's a meme of and the Dolphins of Tua looking out the bar window. Right, he's in jail because he's not yeah. in the playoffs, and he's looking out the window. And there's there's the Washington football team, you know, just walking around all happy in the playoffs. Now we're in the playoffs. Yep, the playoffs are here. Another fun fact for you: the NFL went 256 games. With no cancellations. Yeah, all rescheduled. In a yeah. COVID year. Yeah, amazing. That is amazing because college football had games canceled. You had basketball, had games canceled, postponed. I mean, once it got in the bubble, it was good, but there was a bubble that was created, yeah. right? To, to finish right. out the season. I'm beyond impressed that A, the football season even started. And ended, finished. We're we're close to the finish line here, but we are here. All right, so we got some interesting matchups. Yes, going on this weekend, and 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 you know I won. I have to play three times. Yeah, yeah. So I won the regular season pickums. Yes, not by much. You made a roaring comeback in the final Thank weeks you. here. Thank you. So I am the regular season champ, but now the playoffs are here, and it's it's zero zero. Whole new season, baby. That's so what that means. We're going to dive into these matchups very briefly. Uh, we're going to save the Bucks for last, like we usually do. So, of course, I'm going to start with the rematch for the third time. Yes. Browns, Steelers. It's in Pittsburgh. Who do you got? The Browns are dealing with COVID. Their head coach is not going to be there for the game. Yes. This week, he's tested positive. Who wins the third time? The, uh, the, the Steelers won the first one, convincing, blew them out. It was a high-scoring game. The second one, the Browns won by two. Yep. And again, they had to win to get into the playoffs with Mason Rudolph as a quarterback for the, <laughs> the, the Steelers, and it was still a two-point game. Oh, thump, thump. <laughs> Who wins this game here for you? 
Steelers win the game by by two or more touchdowns. Wow. Steelers win the game. I like the Steelers too. It's gonna be closer than that, I think, but I do like the Steelers as well. So I, I'm gonna go with you with the Steelers. Yeah. In our next matchup, you got the Buffalo Bills, who we have not said that name in the playoffs in a very long time. Very long time. And the Colts. The Bills are at home. Again, as the, as the champ of their division. Who are you taking in this matchup here? This is a very intriguing matchup for me. It, it, it is. I'm taking Bills. Bills are hot. The Bills, they, they've got something to prove. They, they look okay to me. I, I think they win. I think they have trouble when they play the Steelers. I wonder, I wonder how much the media, the Bills Mafia, right? They're allowing fans in the playoff game. I think about 6,000 people. Not a whole lot of people, but still, they're allowing people into it. There's a lot of pressure on the Bills to perform. It, it, a, lot, a lot, just of like the Ravens from last year. Absolutely. And, and that's what worries me, is that they're the Ravens from last year. There's a lot of pressure on them. They have high expectations. Josh Allen is a potential MVP candidate. He's in the, yes. he's in the, they say he's in the running with Mahomes. You know, he's playing for third place at this point. But he's in the running. He's being mentioned. I like the Bills too, but I think it's a close game. Mm. The Colts have good defense. John Taylor just ran for over 200 yards last week in their season finale. Yep. They find to the ball to fill over his hands, just hand the ball off a, a ton, play good defense. Again, I've always told you, running teams do well in the playoffs. It carries on to the playoffs. The Bills are not that well of a running team. Yeah, but they got a good. I mean, they're explosive offense. I, yeah, I don't but remember I don't, weather. The, Colts. the weather the Colts. is going to play a role into this. I think it's going to play a role in the Colts. I don't think it's going to play a role in the Bills. I, I don't think, think. Game, but I I like the Bills here as well. Yeah. In this next matchup, we get a rematch from last year in the Ravens in the Tennessee Titans. The right. Titans put out the Ravens last year because, as you said, Lamar Jackson couldn't throw a ten yard out, and Derrick Henry just ran down their throats. Yep. Last year the game was in Baltimore. This year the game's in Tennessee. Who wins this game? This one I think is going to be really close. I think this is going to be a really close game, man. Now the the Ravens the last couple of weeks have really turned it on. They've really yeah, I, stepped it all up. I'll give you another fun fact: the Ravens in the last four weeks have ran for more yards right. than any team in a four week span ever. Wow. I think, how can I say this? Why I say this is amazing is because the Ravens, if you remember early in the year, had locker room issues. Correct. They had locker room problems. Your coach is out there in the middle of the field and nobody wants to help him. You know what I mean? I don't think I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I think it's going to be a close game. But I'm going to edge it out with the 2,000 rushing yard Tennessee Titans. Ooh. I think so, man. I think... I think they're going to load that box up, but I still think they're going to run down their throats, man. And there's control thing, the clock. There's one thing that's guaranteed in this game. This will be the fastest game played of the weekend because you're going to see 100 runs. The clock will continue to oh, tick, yeah. tick, 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 tick the entire time because of how much each team runs the ball, which I think is going to play a role. Time possession is going to be vital. There's yeah. not going to be a lot of possessions. I'm going to give the slight edge to Baltimore in this one. I think Baltimore comes in a little edgy. They've been kind of under the water a little bit. And everybody's not really talking about them. You know, yeah. they early in the season, they kind of had them out of the playoffs because of th that little losing streak they kind of went on. Then, yeah. they, like you mentioned, they picked it up the last four weeks here with four straight wins. I think they win the game in a close one. I think it's a three-point game. Yeah. They have Justin Tucker, one of the best – Field goals of all time in the playoffs. These things matter. I think Baltimore wins a game in a very close one. So here, if Baltimore, if Baltimore, if Lamar Jackson can hit that out at 12 or 15, 12 to 15 yards, they'll be just fine. If he can't do it, there it's going to be a problem for them. They're going to load the box and dare him to throw, and he's not going to make those throws. If he worked on it, yeah, I, I can see Baltimore winning, but I just think Tennessee's rolling right now. Yeah, so we'll, we'll definitely take a look at it. The next intriguing matchup for the third time, we have the L.A. Rams and the Seahawks. This game is being played in Seattle. There is no 12th man because they don't have any fans in their stadium. Who wins this game and why? I got the Seahawks winning it. I don't trust golf, man. 
I don't trust golf. I think golf doesn't show up after after I saw him last last time. Does he play? I don't Does know. Golf even play because he's still questionable. Yeah. And there's rumors within the locker room that the team may prefer the quarterback they played last week. And that, that that's what I'm saying. If golf goes into the game, I, I don't trust him. I don't trust him to play. Uh, I don't trust him to beat Seattle. Now that new guy, meh, maybe, maybe he can do some. But Seattle season, man, they've been to these playoffs. I don't see him losing the wild card game. I don't see him losing. You know what I'm saying? I see them winning that game. Now the next round, I don't know about that one. Whether it's the Bears or the Saints, that's going to be a problem. But the Seahawks, I got the Seahawks winning. Yeah, I'm on the Seahawks as well. I don't like golf. I don't like him. I don't think he's very good personally. I think he struggles offensively. And I think Russell Wilson is Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson magic turns on. The, the, this guy's one of the – yeah, he just finds a way. That yeah. That's perfectly said. He just finds a way. Now, my upset alert, and I'll go first because you've gone first for the last couple ones here, is the Saints and the Bears. Now, you're saying upset alert. What do you mean? The second seed – against a number seven seed. Right, Chicago's coming in. They Trubisky's been Trubisky. The Bears have figured something out. David Montgomery's been running the ball well. Trubisky's been doing enough. He's 4-0 the last couple weeks since he replaced yeah, Nick Foles. They found out what works for him. They have a good defense. Now, again, the Saints have the best defense in the NFL for the teams that are in the playoffs. Number one across the board. Right, so they're going to give the Bears all they can handle defensively, but I think the the Bears also. The Saints have the number one. I thought it was the Bears that had number one. No, the, the Saints are ranked number one overall across the board statistically. Wow. Uh, the Bears are in the top five. Wow. Right, so there's a battle of defenses here. Yeah, Michael Thomas comes back. He's he's off the injury report and practicing this week, so he should be active this week. So the Saints should be at full strength going into this game. Khalil Mack coming off the edge. Drew Brees, I don't think he's 100% yet. I think if you get some early hits on right. him, could be an issue. Be bad. Yeah. I know Alvin Kamara scored you know, six, seven touchdowns a couple weeks ago. Will they be uh, back for this game? I don't know. Right. I don't know. I don't know if the running backs are back or not. Because they got COVID right before the game. And if you follow the 10 day protocol, like we talked about earlier, technically puts them out of this game also. They'll right. come back until Monday after this weekend. We're going to see how that kind of plays out. Uh, we'll update the fans as we as we get closer to, to, right. to the week for sure online and social media. Again, if you haven't done so yet, visit our Facebook group uh, on the Clock Sports Talk, join the debate, have the conversation there with us. I'm taking the Bears in an upset special. And you, I don't, I don't blame you because the Bears' defense is playing great. Khalil Mack and freaking line is playing awesome. I, I, I want to, and, and I'm going to you. Drew Brees yeah. is notorious for not showing up. Yeah, in these games, these are the games that he goes nine for twenty, throws for a buck twenty as far as yardage. Has I wonder two how, I wonder how healthy, I wonder how healthy Michael Thomas really is. That too, that plays a role. And again, we want to talk about earlier about and and you know this is his last rodeo. It's it's been rumors out that he's going to retire when this is over. To yeah. me, that's a signal that he's not fully healthy, and that things for, with his body are potentially in danger. So Maybe. those hits are going to be costly. You know, Michael Thomas, like you said, with his with his ankle injury again, I think it's a seventeen thirteen game. If if Kamara if Kamara could play, I think they Saints win. If he's not in the game, I don't think I don't think they're gonna I don't think they're gonna care about the run. I don't think they're gonna because there's no running backs. They're not gonna give a care. They're just gonna double team Michael Thomas and tell you tell find somebody else to beat us here on the team. You know what I mean? I got the Saints winning, but again, not by much. That that Chicago Bears defense is it's pretty stacked. It's pretty it's pretty stacked. And, and Khalil Mack coming off the edge as a scary sight. Oh, uh, a, I, I watched what we played. You ever seen his sack dance like that dude? He flexes those guys. Scary, dude. Two freaking pythons just fighting amongst each other, man. It's ridiculous. That, that That's crazy. And then the game that I know you love to talk about. Yep. My Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, now, you obviously know where I'm going with this. I think yeah. the Bucs are going to win. I, and, and the reason why. A, I don't think the Washington football team have the offense to keep up with the Bucs. Okay. Even though 
Washington has a great defense. I think they have a very good defense. They have a good defensive line. I think Chase Young is going to be a superstar in this league. Yeah. Um, he called out Tom Brady. Yes, you know, he did. He, there's comments of him. You know, there's audio of him running into the the tunnel after the game was over and they won the playoffs saying, I want Tom Brady. I love that so, energy. And he's going to be matched up against Donovan Smith the whole game, which is our weakest tackle. Listen, so uh, you hit it on the head. Washington football team has no offense. I'm still going with the Washington football team. Wow. Of course you would. That's my would. upset alert. That's my <laughs> upset alert. I think they do enough to win the game. I think being pressured, the other players who don't have never seen playoffs, I think they fold. I think you got to go play in the cold, and I, I don't think there's only three players on your team that can handle it. And that's Tom Brady, Tony Brown, and, and Gronk. And JPP. JPP can handle the cold, too. He used to play for the We'll Giants. see. We'll see. He was yeah. probably on the bench with a big old jacket. I don't remember playing much. I think this is a, score-wise, I think this is a 28-10, 34-14 shellacking. Yeah. I, think and, the, and, I think Tom Brady, and, and, and Tom Brady came out, there's a video of him coming out. Um, he, cause he does, he does a, after each win, he does a TikTok video and it posts on social media and the bucks, in, uh, app and everything. And there's, and you know, he's congratulating his team on, on accomplishment of, of going sure. into the playoffs, but in the video, he tells them, he goes, they know the real playoff starts now or the real yeah. season starts now Yeah, to me. I think you're going to see a different buck team. I think you're going to see a buck. To, I think he's going to get the ball of his hands quicker. We, we've seen it the last couple of weeks. He better get the ball of his hands quicker because Chase Young is going to he's going to fire oh, down on that man. But again, uh, another fun fact in my last one of the day, Tom Brady has not been sacked in six games. I don't think he's played a defensive line that good. That young man is motivated. Chase Young is Brady. coming to get Tom. If he gets a sack on Tom or he just pressures him or rattles him a little bit, because that's all he really needs. Yeah, he's a that, right. kid, that kid might be doing a little strategic thing here. You know, <laughs> let, let's let's settle in here and let's think about this. That kid probably knows. Okay, Tom Brady gets rattled when there's defensive linemen around him. He's gonna go down. He's not really gonna be. Uh, what do you call it? He's not gonna feel safe in that pocket. You know what I mean? So he's probably saying, "I'm coming for you, Tom." So when Tom Brady gets to the game, he's like, "Where's this kid at?" He's probably playing mind games with the coat right now. Listen, man. <laughs> Tom Brady has been doing this longer. But Chase Chase Young was like four years old when Tom Brady got his first playoff win. Yeah, but that four year old grew up to be a very very large man. And that four year old yeah, and, 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 that 40, lately. And, and that forty four year old or Tom Brady, that forty year plus year old, is still the goat, and he's still Tom Brady, and he has weapons. And okay. I think and, and and I think the last couple weeks we developed a good running game. Ronald Jones has done well. The line has played better. Again, I think the Bucks do well, and we head we head over to Green Bay. For your sake, I hope so, because you've been preaching all yeah, no, all year long that they're I don't go do to well. I don't do well when the Bucks don't. Win. Yeah, you've been you've been screwing the pooch on that one. So we're gonna see because this this is also what you 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 are gone around and danced around here. They have to play in Washington, and it's a primetime game. And you guys, it is eight o'clock. That's the only worry I have is that it is an eight o'clock game. You guys suck at night. So we're going to see if you guys are with lights on, prime time. This is going to let you know if your team's a Super Bowl ready team or not. Because you have yet to win a night game. You're cursed. I know. Yeah, you're cursed. I don't know. We'll pray. I'll pray for you. We'll pray. Just so you guys know, that is all the time we have for On the Clock Radio this week. Please, if you haven't done so, if you're watching on YouTube, go down there, hit the subscribe, follow button, like, comment. Tell us if you like it or not. Whatever the case you tell me if you think the Bucs are going to win. Tell me if you think the Saints are going to win. Give us your bold predictions. But also, hey, listen, I know there's some crazy times going on around our world. Just take care of your families. Take care of yourself. Do what you got to do. Put food on the table. And please, please, please wear a mask. George, I will see you Monday morning, bright and early, after all these beautiful games. So we're going to see how that goes. Yeah, so on our next show, we're going to recap the games that was, what upsets occurred, and whatnot. And then we'll do a full breakdown of the college football national championship game that we played on Monday, hopefully. Yes. If you enjoyed today's podcast, again, hit subscribe here on YouTube. 
if you're on if you're on a podcast, hit follow, leave us a review, tell us what you think about the show. Send us an email at on the clock twenty at gmail.com. You can join the debate on Facebook. Our Facebook group is on the clock sports talk. Visit our website and catch up on all of our shows at OTC Sports Talk dot com until next time you're on the clock <laughs>